So how do you plan your year with your virtual assistant or with a virtual team? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've got the answers for you. Hey there, if we haven't met yet, my name is Jen Lehner. I'm a digital marketing and systems strategist and I have helped hundreds of solopreneurs learn how to outsource the smart way so they can grow their businesses. When it comes to planning for the year, here's the thing. The fact that you're even thinking about including your virtual assistant in your planning means that you are light years ahead of everybody else. Why? Because as solopreneurs, I think what a lot of us do is if we plan at all, like for the whole year, it's all us. We're the visionary. We're the ones with all the ideas. We're steering the ship. We think we're the ones that need to do the planning. And obviously we are going to lead the ship. We're driving the boat or steering the boat or whatever the analogy is you want to use. It's like everything I teach as it relates to working with virtual assistants. If you want your virtual assistant to feel ownership in your business, to truly feel like a part of your business, needs to be able to to give creative input and to share opinions and ideas. And trust me, some of those ideas that your VAs might share with you could completely change the trajectory of your business. But at a bare minimum, you have a virtual assistant that understands that they truly are a part of your business, that you truly care about their ideas and what their insights are. Before you go into your planning session with your virtual assistant, pick a date that is going to work for both of you comfortably. And that means if your virtual assistant is in the Philippines and you are on New York time in the United States, when it's 6 a.m. your time, it's 6 p.m. their time. So you want to figure out, is there a time when you're both kind of going to be at your freshest? I say block out as much as half a day. Make this a real event, something that you can both enjoy and sink your teeth into. Then the very first thing that you're going to do, look back at your year and all that you accomplished and celebrate that. And this is something that ideally you want to have compiled before you show up for the meeting, right? And they can add to that, but this is really an opportunity to be like, look at us, look at all that we did. And then open it up to your team. What did I miss? Because wow, we got a lot done. Yay us, great, this was amazing. You know, we're always chasing, chasing, chasing. It's the dream is always on the horizon, but it's so important to stop and look back at all the stuff that we did. So that's gonna get things off to really the right vibe is going to be there. The next thing that you want to do is look at your calendar. And we use Google Calendar in my business. So we're going to look at the Google Calendar and we're going to go month by month, quarter by quarter through the whole year and first plug in all the dates when we know we're going to be taking vacation. We have a wedding to attend, whatever. We're going to get those dates of where everybody's not going to be working on the calendar. After we do that, we're going to look at all the projects that we already have scheduled and we're going to put the projects on the calendar with the understanding that all of this is sort of written in pencil because that's what the meeting is for. You might want to be judging these dates or it might be that you scrap a project, but right now you're going into the calendaring or the planning. You're going to sketch in, loosely sketch in all of your projects and events and launches and so forth. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go through last year's calendar, project by project, event by event, all the things you did in your business, you wanna go back and basically say what worked and what didn't. And everybody's gonna give their perspective on this. This can be so illuminating because some things you thought worked well, your VA actually not so much. So this is a very important conversation. This is going to lead you into your actual projects that are coming up because based on what worked and what didn't, this is gonna inform you as you plan all your upcoming projects. Or if you're going to scrap a project, or if you have an idea for a new project, they have an idea for a new project, new content creation, new formats, client onboarding, whatever it may be, this is the phase of the meeting where you're gonna move into all of that. This is going to naturally lead you into your pileup zone from last year. What is the pileup zone? If you've been following me for any length of time, this is one of those things that I talk about regularly because it's so simple 
But basically, if you use a Trello board, it's a card on your Trello board, a note in your Evernote. It's where you put all the ideas that you like, but you're not going to tackle right now. It's an idea for later. Well, now it's later. It's your annual planning session. So you're going to pull out your pileup zone and you're going to look at those and see like, what do we want to incorporate, if any of this, into the next year. As your meeting goes on throughout the day, as you're brainstorming, you'll be adding things to the pileup zone that you'll look back at maybe at the end of next quarter and certainly at the end of next year when you do the same planning. Because you know what your projects are going to be, you can base your, for example, if you had an online course that made X amount of money, but now you have new plans for launching it in a different way, launching it in a bigger way, putting more Facebook ads towards that, whatever it may be, it's time to start setting your goals, starting with revenue goals. This is an opportunity for you. This is probably going to come more from you as to what you see our revenue, what you think your revenue needs to be. If you have salespeople, then obviously you need to have their individual goals. If nothing else, just a big picture like this is our revenue target this year. And these are our revenue targets for each of these things, for this product, for this service, for this online course. Now, at this point, towards the end of your meeting, everybody's kind of running out of their creative juices. So this is a good time to dive more into administrative stuff. In this point in your planning, you want to evaluate all of your services and subscriptions that you're paying for that maybe you can scrap and don't need. And this is a time to talk about maybe new tools or new things that you might want to try out. And this is something you can, in an email prior to your meeting, have them start to think about and start to compile so that that when you get there, you've got everything at your fingertips. An easy way to do this, if you aren't that organized, is to just grab a credit card statement or your bank statement, wherever your subscriptions get drafted from, bring that for yourself to look at and go through line by line. Do we still need MailChimp? Do we still need Evernote? And so forth. So now at the very end, you're going to make your list of the next most important steps that everybody needs to take individually and then together as a team. The last thing I want to say about planning your year with your team is that this is such a great opportunity for you to have a second chance or a third chance of maybe cleaning some things up. You didn't do so well, maybe when your virtual assistant first started, basically to shift things that you've been wanting to shift for a long time. It's an opportunity also to restate what your values are as a company. And of course, what your goals are, your big goals, your ultimate goals, your why. Good for you for even thinking about planning your year with your virtual assistant and your team. And if you don't have a team, if you're going at this alone, you don't need to. I've got so many free resources to get you going to find your perfect match VA. And depending on when you're watching this, I've got a a live challenge that's going to be happening in February. Just go to CEOsecretstraining.com to learn about that. If that time has passed, there will probably be a replay or a masterclass of some sort at frontrowceo.com. And of course, I've got a million videos here on YouTube. So let me know if you have any questions. Did I miss something? Let me know how I can help. Just comment down below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. 